And these are my children, Lord have mercy. But I was five, I think, when I had This is my, my youngest son, Chris, my middle son, Ben. And I have one more. So, and so we just we delighted with this, this is a threesome, three-legged stool, if you will. The, um, the roses and the, the, and then the 1913 and then I went to school. So our goal is just to keep things serving the community and moving uh, the power center to, to greater heights. We realize the, the role that it plays in the community and the importance of it in the community. So we look forward to serving you and we look forward to knowing more about your businesses and um, how we can collaborate too in entrepreneurship for my children because we are teaching them about entrepreneurship and each of you represents that. So we look forward to, to learning more about what you do and having you come and share um, your gifts, your vision, and how you made it over with my children. Uh, hey, I'm Chris Williams, uh, from New Seals, New Seals, 1930. I'm also a tenant. <laughs> um, so long my mother's history of the building, we and Ben pretty much grew up over here. Uh, what we do currently is we occupy the kitchen, so we'll be doing all the events that happen with we'll your primary caterer. Any meetings that you guys have, you don't have any kind of setup like that. You're more than have to provide for you. Um, you know, price. Um, we'll also be using this place, we'll continue to use the, the kitchen for our, our center for our food outreach programs that we do. Today we've donated over 400,000 mills to our community, um, from here to Sunnyside down in Cleveland, Texas, and other places in between, north. Uh, so we'll continue on those operations. And as far as <laughs> this transition, what we're really going to focus on as a tenant is a tenant experience. So like my mother just alluded to, we want to find out what your needs are, um, what your issues and concerns are, and make sure that's at the top of the list of the things that we address, uh, just to make for a better, cleaner, happier, more profitable experience for all of us. Um, my other brother. So my wife and I will be heading up the uh, collaborator incubator, and really that is uh, an extension of attempting to help your businesses grow and become stronger. My wife is the former chair of the uh, Greater Houston Black Chamber, uh, where she served for three years in helping to bring businesses together and uh, opportunities to small and medium-sized businesses from across the country. So our goal is to bring resources to you as a business owner that can help you grow your business from be it financial, be it uh, um, different entities that will come in and speak or provide services or opportunities that will be able to help your business as well. So we're going to be learning more about what you do and then serving at the end is going to be uh, an opportunity for you to share that with us. Um, I don't know if you know, but, but uh, my wife and her, her family's had a company here, uh, Georgia Jackson Development, in the front office. And then after having that office in the front, we then moved to the back office. Um, and then from there, branched out and had an office in, in Lake Olympia. But been here quite some time as a tenant before, before even uh, being here in this capacity. So looking forward to understanding what your needs are and being able to have opportunities for those needs to be met while you're here. So feel free to let us know what those are. Once again, the survey at the end is a great start to let us know what your business does, the capacity that it's in, and we'll be working to kind of bring grants and opportunities uh, to serve this particular facility and you as a team. So as you can see, our vision is to make this a premier workspace to make it a premier event center, really a black mecca of excellence with everything that we do. 
one of the things I want to be conscious of is the government and the women to do is that we know that the facility needs a lot of upgrades to it. Um, as tenants here, um, as parents here, we understand that we come to this building every day. So we know that there's a lot of work to be done and we're ready to roll up our sleeves and get done. And one of the things that we're excited about is a complete new vision. Um, and it's going to take a while to get there, but we do want to show some of the things that we are hopeful for uh, and praying for and working towards to be able to actually do in terms of getting this building a complete new facade. It's been 27 years since it was originally renovated. So we know that part of this process of really going to the next level of power center 2.0, whatever you want to call it, we know that our renovation, major renovation, is actually good. So this just kind of shows you some of the things that we are uh, thinking about and planning. This is still being in our words. Um, well, we're going to have a team of experts, uh, designers that help us with this, with fundraising for this. Uh, but just know we're really excited about the future and all the things that we can do with this facility and we can make the premier event and the premier workspace in the city of Manchester. But as we get to that point, we know that there's some immediate needs that we can address uh, for you all. And I'm going to ask Phoenix to come and just talk about some of those things that we're going to try to do and make happen in the next two or three months um, on behalf of the city. First of all, security, right? So we, now we have security in the long site from 6 to 6 p.m. Uh, six days a week, excluding Sundays currently. Um, the second thing I heard just from my few talks with severe tenants is about you know, the Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So that's already being addressed. It should be all in place, and you'll get notifications about whatever access you need to have for that um, by the 1st of February. Um, obviously, uh, maintenance is one thing. So we're having another person to the staff uh, come Wednesday of this week. That's going to be uh, circulating more on bathrooms and emptying the trash in our offices and stuff like that on a regular rotation type of basis. Um, we want to move, so we're going to move, move the reception and put it to the front of the building. Um, which leads into access control, we would say what's the second would like. So where nobody enters the building without getting uh, dressed, and then you know, they'll be directed to your offices from that point. Um, so that way we kind of cut down on, let's just say people like, don't need to be in the building, be in the building. But we're really trying to make it like that. Yeah, so we're really trying to make it a, a lot more secure, and that goes like for the school as well, um, from this side of the building. So we're also going to install in various uh, access control centers at different hallways to where your key files will allow you to in there if you need to be down this hallway or that hallway, whatever. But there'll be time, and so you know, you'll always have access to your site. Or that's one thing that we're going to ask. Uh, you know, your insight on is operating hours of the building because we definitely want to have a firm stop sign, you know, every day. So uh, that we can probably make sure it's secure all the way around. And uh, so obviously these other things, as far as parking lot goes, you know, we're going to be doing the roof. The roof of the parking lot are the biggest things immediately that we're attempting to address. So uh, before we get to the, they say the, the bells and whistles and beautification, some of those things just have to be done. So that's, that's kind of what we're kind of focused on like right right now. Um, that's really the bathrooms and everything we take care of as part of that whole thing that I, mainly what we just want to make sure is just the, the basic things that you guys and I just heard some of you talk about, we want to get address those immediately. So I think we've done some of that, but we don't know all of that. That's what we hope to learn from today from you guys. Like what are some things you like to see improved? You know what you want. You know, so you can be your best. You can be our best. Really 
Y'all excited about those Sundays? Yes. Yeah. 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 Your neighbors, uh, there's nothing that don't facilitate that. Uh, my doctor class body was my son's eyeglasses just because it was, you know, he was here to me. And I said, oh, let me, let me utilize him. Uh, Mr. Devin said, our business card two years since he was here and it just kind of worked. But there was nothing that was pulling us together, allowing us to understand what each business does for us to have cooperative economics. Brought to make an is so powerful um, for our for our own businesses. So with the business team we really want to focus on that. We want to focus on networking together um, as neighbors, we want to focus on educating ourselves as neighbors, um, and being able to grow our businesses collectively. We are very unique that this is a black owned facility. We are unique that these are black owned businesses and there are a lot of opportunities for our businesses. Do the internet we want to provide education on how to get your business certified, um, how to take advantage of those opportunities that are actually out there. One of the first things that we're going to do is a partnership with the Great Eastern Black Chamber. Um, as my husband mentioned, I have a great relationship with the Chamber, currently chair of the Chamber Foundation. Um, the Chamber is going to host a business readiness program cohort, especially just for the powers of the this is a wonderful opportunity to one, get free business assessment on the business, uh, two, get free membership into the Great Eastern Black Chamber and everything that comes along with it, and a series of courses that you can pick and choose which ones may be helpful for the business. All the classes will be hosted right here at the facility, so you don't have to go anywhere else to take advantage of it. But we want to be able to provide opportunities like that where you see a course, it's something that you think you can benefit from. You can come on in and actually learn about it. The survey that we're asking to do will ask you about times of day, the days, of weeks, etc. But we're excited about creating that connectivity between businesses and really making this opportunity where your business can actually work here. So we're really excited about that also, too. This is the survey um, at the end. We have a QR code that we're going to put up. So just know we will come back and then actually visit that. Um, I do want to introduce our staff. So we are staffing up um, quickly uh, to be able to make this uh, transition happen on February 1st. So if you want the three ladies in the back, if you all can stay in, I want to introduce them. Um, Ms. Goldie Flemings. Ms. Goldie will be our uh, uh, office manager. Uh, she'll be at the reception desk. Uh, she'll be here from 9 to 6 daily. Uh, so she will be here, she'll be available for questions, uh, any maintenance items that you have, like blood out, etc. Ms. Goldie will be there to receive you. Uh, Ms. Lisa Jefferson. Ms. Jefferson is our bookkeeper uh, and office manager also, so she'll be at the desk uh, uh, sometimes. But she will be the one uh, helping to manage dealing. Uh, so if you have a question about your rent or you need to make a payment or something of that nature, Ms. Jefferson will be here to, to assist you. Uh, Ms. Robin Jefferson will be uh, handling events on behalf of uh, 1913. So if you do have a company event or a company dinner or lunch that you want to plan, uh, Ms. Robin Jefferson can help you do that and get all the catering and all of those things those set up. So these three ladies, we are building a dream team. Uh, our focus is customer service. Uh, our focus is uh, we're going to make this a wonderful work environment for, for you all. Um, so please reach out to us in that regard. Um, I do want to just mention a couple of uh, items, a couple of email addresses that may be helpful to you. We want to show you to mail all this out so you'll have to. Uh, but for um, maintenance issues, management at communitycollectivehouston.org, or you can just go to the front desk, which you can put in your arc here, management at communitycollective.org. In addition, I just want to mention um, that if you are um, having issues with your lease, renewing your lease, et 
cetera, how do we manage all of the pieces in terms of the rules, extension of the space, et cetera, so please reach out to me. And I put my email address on there, for me at community.org for that also too. So we can be up there with you and serve and make sure that you have a wonderful experience. Okay, so we've been doing a lot of talk. We want to hear from you all. We want to know the good, the bad, the ugly. We want to know how to improve. We want to know what is priority list, where we start at. Um, any questions that you all have for us, um, any concerns that you want to mention, um, we want to please open up the floor. Children, y'all can join me in this. Uh, but please share the feedback that you want to have for us. Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's nice to know that you are so um, aggressive, not in a bad way, of course, <laughs> in trying to make this so much better. I too was here at the very beginning uh, when we were putting up this building. And um, so I'm happy to see all the changes. Because I've been here so long, and you know, you've been here so long too, I have a few comments. Not that everybody's going to agree with them, but they may be peculiar to me because I'm not a destination. For example, I would say Chase Bank is a destination, you can know for Chase Bank. I have competition over there at, um, what's up, it's not that, uh, uh, yes. So when somebody comes here and people who come in front, they see the sign over there for my competition and they go over there. And I don't mind, you know, I mean, if I were that person, I just came there. So I would like to see all kinds who have signage, who used to have signs, but they were taken away, and it would be nice to have signage again. That's my number one thing. Secondly, and this one, for example, I know for sure some not quite proud of my agree with it, but I say that way because it's a concern of mine. When the city of Houston elevated South Bend, our center one, this is your power center two, complained usually, saying, hey, people are not going to see us. There's no visibility when you raise that. Now we have projected all of these streets, which are wonderful, which are wonderful, but because they are trees that are going to grow so big in no time, this place will be so wooded you can't see us. So visibility is an issue, it's a potential issue, we want to look at that. Okay. And of course we talked about security, and I'm glad that you already brought it up. There was a third part that I was going to mention, but I'm so old now, I can't remember everything I want to say. So, <laughs> I'm okay with those two. <laughs> yes, so thank you very much. Thank you for that. Thank you. This is good to report the signage possibilities. I know at one point there was some signage. But that's been taken over the years to be done. We use that. Comments, questions? Yes, sir. Hello, I'm R.J. Williams. Some of you know me for doing business with me for the broadcast of COVID testing. I'm the guy that does it. Ben knows me a couple of times to do uh, COVID testing. The thing I'm concerned about is we don't have a way to communicate or board when one of us needs to post what's going on in our business or uh, we have a special or you might be having lunch uh, for special days. So that's the thing that we can improve on uh, for us communication within the members itself. That's good. We'll get some tools um, that we can utilize for communication within the, uh, within the network. Okay. Yes, sir. This is Hello, my name is Duval Mitchell. I'm uh, guest one of the newest tenants here uh, as of November. However, Ms. Williams and I go back about 27 years. My daughter went to the Imani School. When we, she first opened it there, 
and I'm also a concert performer, so I did the first concert here with Yolanda Adams. You probably remember that back in '96 in the ballroom. So I do a lot of concerts and events, and that's one of the reasons I got the office back here now because I want to host a lot of events and concerts here at the Power Center. So I want to also invest my time, my intellectual properties, my funds. Uh, matter of fact, I, I've done a lot of concerts here. So uh, I'm looking forward to doing that and quite as it's kept. My wife and I entertained purchasing the Power Center. Uh, not long ago, before you guys, or I, we'll talk about that later, but even if I can't be part owner, I also want to be one of the major sponsors to help you guys transform this center. I do concerts at the, at the uh, Smart Financial, at the Toyota Center, Reliance Stadium. Why not come back home and do some stuff right here in our own backyard? So that's one of my reasons for being here. I want you guys to use me up. Uh, and I can bring, like I said, my intellectual properties. I've been doing concerts since 81. So I, I can, this ballroom, and this here is one of Houston's best kept secrets. I mean, it's a diamond in the rough. So yes, I want to help you guys and invest. This young lady know me, also Miss Rose. I had 22,000 square feet almost over in the uh, arena towers. Where I can host five, 600 folks up there. So some people, when I got this office, they said, well, why are you getting the office at the power center? You, you might be up in the air with the views. I said, yeah, well, but the power center is my home base. So I'm back home here to do whatever I can to have something going on in this main ballroom every week, having catering service, having stuff. I can help me. Plus, I have a company called the National Home Based Business Association, where we help women and youth start their own side businesses. Plus, I help women that are dealing with domestic violence, called the Ball Standing Against Domestic Violence. Our last concert, I paid for genuine. Christopher Williams to do a show here a couple of years ago, and I paid for 500 women dealing with domestic violence to attend it. The next year, the COVID came in, but this year we're picking back up, and we're going to be doing a lot of those events here too. So I know my time is up, but <laughs> for those who want to know more about it, and I want to talk with you guys about it, being that fourth thing. So we'll, we'll talk. Hello, I'm Angela Rogers. This is my partner, Regina. We own the Power Club. We own the Previously, the Power Club Pharmacy. Okay, my main concern is what's been already brought up. It was the cleaning of, you know, cleaning of the pharmacy. Uh, blocking up the front door, and you know, right now we're closing at four, and that's kind of very difficult for pharmacies to close. And also the signage uh, on the building, if you're anywhere, anywhere out there with some kind of signage, people don't know that we're here. Also, I had a couple things for Dr. Mark, who's in there, and they're on the office today. They're, they're very concerned about signs, repairs in their office, and Thank you. 
Hello, my name is Kelly Sandoval, and I just wanted to speak and say that um, this collaboration is exciting. Um, I am really you know, looking forward to the changes. This is high level that you mentioned, and it's just expected that the nitty gritties will be worked out. Um, and like everybody has spoken already about some of the particulars. And I just want to say that I am, I chose the Power Center, one, because of security as a one employee um, business, um, female business, um, two, because of the price point, and three, because of the community. It feels like family. And I just want, uh, within reason, all of that to continue. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Okay, comments? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, my name is Rochelle here, and um, I'm Isaiah. Um, we're here on the weekend, so I want to know about the building going to be closed because my clients come in and we have to you know, plan to come and open the doors. I know you said security is here. Fair, but I'll pass it on fair and Yes, so, so the point is on Saturday for us to stay at from 9 to 1. Um, so, um, uh, what time do you do your, your classes? Yeah, about 4.30. About 4.30. So, that's eight. And that's good feedback for us. We just had a conversation about what's needed on Saturdays. Uh, so, we you know that the beauty shop is here, the beauty shop early in the morning. Uh, but knowing that you are having classes and there's other we'll see what other activities are um, are are happening on Saturdays also to the staff for. But the plan now is nine to one on a Saturday. So hopefully we'll be discovered actually more of the times uh, for in the uh, security officers here. Uh, what about Sunday? What about Sunday? Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday. And then, um, as far as the Saturday you know, after the majority of the staff is out of the building, you can always, like, if you're waiting on your, your group to come, you can just go down to the front reception area and then buzz your clients in. You just, you just have to leave somebody there. So, um, so your group is all in the building, you know, that way you don't have to go over the back and forth, you just park at the front desk and just let them in. It's a little bit of a little thing that you don't buzz and you talk to them, make sure they're here for what you need, and just buzz them in, make sure they make more sure they need, you know, as far as somebody goes. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, okay. Is there anyone else that does other things on Sundays? All the times on Sundays? Yes, yes. Um, my name is Catherine Wallace. I have um, a law office here in the building. And I don't remember how long it's been. It's been about 22, 23 years now. So um, my, only, my question is, when you say the off the building hours, will we still be able to access the building at other hours with the fog or some other weeks when the building is not open? So um, you will be able to, no, because after 10 o'clock, potentially the building will be closed. So that way the building will be properly secured. Um, we were talking about maybe some different approaches, but our goal is like after a certain point when the building can be effectively shut down and secured, like so on, you get to have somebody in here stumbling around in the dark without uh, access to turn on lights and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that whole vibe will be that. So, that's why we want to get feedback and see, like, what, what are your needs? So, you can work in some sort of schedule to kind of see how they, you know, as many as possible. Well, I'm not in the building consistently um, until those hours, but there are times, I know when Ms. Owens and I are here, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, depending on um, what our needs are for that week. But, so there are times when. Um, and there are times when I come in on Sundays or after one on Saturday if I need to complete some work. So you're saying whatever the schedule is that you guys put out, we won't be able to access the building other than that. So typically the way it would work is like, you can exit. So the alarm is normally 
typically set automatically, not here, but typically in this case, and I'll set kind of the rate automatically like 11 45 p.m. So, yeah, I mean, at that point, you know, you just got to call like that. But, like, you can still be in there. You just have to call who? Call it a day. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but you can still be in the building, you know, and just know that you might be typically brought that back with you. I'm not sure if you be doing that that hour, but that's what you have to do. But you can do that, you know, but as far as uh, expecting the lights to be on past 10 o'clock and stuff like that. No, I mean, the lights are off now, so I didn't have four. So, right. the lights yeah. are not a problem as long as my office lights continue to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting to that. But yeah, just and if I need to go to the ladies' room, then it's not going to be lots of alarms or something going off if I walk if I well, walk from one area to another. Right, but, but there will be a hard stop because, at, at, like I said, at some point the building will lock itself down, the alarms will come on. And then you don't want to be the one that trips the alarm and gets those code uh, those penalties for false alarms and stuff. So there will be a hard stop at some point. But we'll discuss what the hard stop. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm thinking it's pretty much going to be 10 o'clock, and then that still gives like an hour or some change of lingering, but then those alarms are going to come on at like 11.45. Ten times better than six. I just wanted oh, to yeah, make sure. No, 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 security. Security. no, 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 security will leave at six. You okay. can be in here. They're still coming in, cleaning up, whatever, 10 o'clock. That's when, you know. So, just, so to clarify, for the full staff, your security, uh, security starts at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The staff reception is going to be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. She can still have access to the building, but until 10 p.m. after 10 p.m., then the alarms all that stuff will actually happen. It's Sunday. So Sunday, you're saying, can't see access to the building. There won't be any security here, and there won't be, and that man, that's a question, figure out as far as the lights and stuff like that. You know, we don't, but there's two, you know, there's just, you know, it's two people out of this room that really need to be in there, obviously, but the lights are going to be on. So, right. yeah, so, light. okay. Light. Just making sure, yeah. So, yeah, it'll be on next time. No, y'all want to talk about the lights and Yes, sir. Yeah, my operation is a 24 hour operation to service uh, Centerpoint, uh, Metro, and um, uh, YRC Trucking. So they have call out for either randoms or post accident. So I got to have access to, to um, um, service the client on a 24 hour basis. It's not all the time, but they do get calls under the DOT standards. Thank you. 
is more complex. Okay, questions, comments, this is you that we learn a lot. Yes, sir. Communication coming out to let us know, like, okay, this is what we agree upon, and this is going to be our first stream. Okay. I think another good question you might have is in, in the event that I have a problem or a question, who do I contact? So, we discuss it with somebody that's who do I refer back to to get clarity on the, what I believe the truth or the understanding was, right? What, what you, so on here, at the end of the slide, we'll see um, there's going to be management at communitycollectivehouston.org. You can always send an email there for clarifying questions or information you need. But we will also send correspondence to you, informing you on when things are happening. So, hey, uh, be on the lookout. There's going to be parking lot construction happening at this point. Be on the lookout. There's going to be bathroom renovation at this point. Uh, uh, the alarm system has been set, the system starts at 12 o'clock. So there'll be updates, you won't have to figure it out. We will never post something on the doors or the walls that we have not communicated with you about. You won't be the second to know. Uh, your clients won't come and tell you that something's happened before you know about it. Uh, our goal is that your clients don't come and you have to physically go do something to get the business that you've already paid to have. So from let open the door and let them in, coming in in the dark, all those kinds of things. Our objective is that your clients get the same level of respect you thought they would get from eight to five, they, that they receive that. Same thing with bathroom cleaning, same thing with, with uh, uh, parking lot cleanliness. So the business that you have said, you know what, I'm gonna have my business at the power center, let me invest my money, let me invest my resources, tell people where I'm at, put the advertising up, we want to make sure that you always feel uh, as if you made a great decision. Questions, comments? Yes, sir. My name is Dwight Edwards, and I own the Eye of Enlightenment. Um, my question is: I understand from reading the flyer that the Monty School is part of the, the partnership slash ownership of this new operation. So based on that, to what extent will the school expand or will the school expand from the east end of the building further, I mean the west end of the building, further toward this end as far as operations? in this part of the building, but rather we will continue to use this part of the building for parent gatherings when we have back to school meetings with parents or when we have graduation and those kinds of special events or meetings with parents, that kind of thing. So last night when I was leaving, there was a black, because I watched everything that I came up for. I make that nosy paper right there. Because um, our office coming in, and I really take seriously who's coming in and out of the building, especially after hours. And um, there was a black SUV with red letter security. Is that part of this group? There's a parking lot, and he was circulating. I stayed in my car until he got the parking lot. But he was just driving, so I know, and that's not part of the security. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.